When planning for retirement, tax planning is critically important, and it makes sense. The less money you give to the government, the more money you get to keep in your retirement. Uh, Eric Scott, thanks for joining us again on Retirement News Online. Uh, what are the key areas in tax planning? Well, the first key area is going to be your income planning side. There is potential, if you do things right, to pay minimal or no tax on your Social Security checks. Yet we see because people are not planning properly, they pay up to 85% of that check is being taxed in your ordinary income tax bracket. And so you want to make sure you understand that as well as pensions, dealing with income planning. You also need to understand dealing with the government has a plan for you with IRAs and 401ks called required minimum distribution. If you can understand the laws of the land and put together where each one of those can be reduced, you can go into retirement and have less income being taxed and more spendable income for you and your wife to enjoy. So then how are these different investments uh, taxed? Well, we relate to it as the three pails of money. And the first pail of money we relate to is called taxable pail of money. That would be accounts like money markets, savings, could be bonds, could be certain stocks, could be um, checking accounts now, we're seeing those, or CDs. And what happens is you have interest or you could have dividends and they come in and if you're not spending that for income then you have it invested in the wrong pail of money because it increases your tax return. You only want to have enough money to cover 3 to 12 months that is fully liquid to use for emergencies or maybe you have a special trip planned. Anything outside of that should not be in the taxable pail of money. You want to reduce taxes not increase them. So we have tax deferred investments and tax free investments. Uh, talk about tax deferred. Well the second pill of money is tax deferred and that deals with IRAs and 401ks as a general rule. And what we see is 70 percent of all of people's investments is in IRAs and 401ks. Now they have been taught their whole life, put the money in, don't pay the tax on the money going in and you get a, a, a credit and so you uh, have less taxable income but what people forget is, is that if you've done a great job planning and you've saved a really good amount of money then you will be in a higher bracket when that money comes out at age 70 and a half as a required minimum distribution. Also what people forget when you're tax planning and especially looking at those type of accounts as well is you don't have the same deductions like your mortgage interest rate or your kids are in the home or maybe uh, it's dealing with charities and several other areas. So as those deductions go down then that means when this money comes out after all those years of savings it's coming out at the highest taxable bracket that there is and that pushes your taxes up and less spendable income. And finally what about tax-free? You know, the third pail of money is the one that we see the least amount of money in, and that's called the tax-free pail of money. And that would be accounts to where once the money is in there, the growth is tax-free, and the income is tax-free, and passing at death is tax-free, and it also helps so you pay lesser tax on your Social Security checks. When you understand these three pails of money and in retirement, whether you're retired or close to retirement, there are plans and programs you can do to put yourself in the position in a very short period of time to pay less taxes for the rest of your retirement and enjoy more spending income. I have a philosophy, less to the IRS, more to my wife and myself, and that's what everybody should be looking at. My guest has been Eric Scott in St. George, Utah. Thanks for watching Retirement News Online.